Uh, my past videos always discussed the uh, acoustic guitar, while there was always a nice electric guitar standing behind me. It would be a pity to be able to shred on the acoustic guitar and just play some chords on the electric guitar. That's why I decided to get the course Next Level Playing a while ago. Next Level Playing is an intermediate course for electric guitar, uh, also by Paul Davis. And similar to my updates uh, for Acoustic Adventure, I will discuss what I learned after completing this first level of Next Level Playing. First of all, I'm going to discuss the solo you just heard a fragment of, then I will go into improvising, and finally I'll just talk about some uh, music theory in the course. So the solo, I think it was a great start to the course actually, I really had a lot of fun playing it. It's not too intimidating and I actually felt it was perfect for my level. It's, uh, it's not too easy, not too hard, it takes a bit of work but it's a fun, fun bit of work. There are three parts of this guitar solo that I struggled with the most, which I will play now very slowly in order not to mess it up completely on this recording. First of all... Second... And lastly, so I quickly noticed that these are, these are the parts that I struggle with the most. So I decided to practice them in isolation from the solo and sometimes even just play only these parts of the solo where I would first start very slowly like increasing the speed a bit, increasing the speed even more. Even more. Oh, that was too fast. Oh. Because for the solo in this level, there are two speeds. There's basically a, well, a slower version and a regular version, or a slow and a fast version, if you prefer. And at this stage of the course, Paul suggests to uh, play along with the slower version, it's fine. And um, to maybe revisit it later on to see if you can play along with the faster version. Uh, personally, I was able to play along with the slower version. Uh, quite quickly, uh, so that, that was nice, but it also made me like, uh, I want to, to challenge myself and see if I'm able to play along with the faster version. So I practiced a bit more and what happened was what you uh, saw probably by now a minute ago. Improvising. If you've seen my early videos, you may have seen a couple of videos where I was improvising after following uh, Justin Guitar's course Major Skill Maestro, which is part of his uh, intermediate module. But to be honest, the topic of uh, improvising died a bit in my practice routine, because at a certain moment I had completed all of uh, Justin's lessons, because the course is still under construction. And I uh, lacked a bit motivation to work on it myself, and probably I get distracted by some acoustic adventures or something. But I'm really happy to revive the topic now. 
And the whole set of lessons in this first level uh, helped me to think more about my improvising. For example, um, well, let's think about the backing track itself. Um, it has only two chords, a C chord, which uh, contains of the notes C, E and G, and an F chord, which consists of the notes F, A and C. You could consider these chord notes the so-called target notes, or notes that will sound good uh, anyway when playing, uh, when improvising over these chords. And the nice thing about this is actually that the note C is part of both chords. It's the, the root note in the C chord, and it's the fifth in the F chord. So the C note is kind of like a safe note all of the time. And the more I was practicing, the more I also started to think about it like this, like which are the notes that would sound good on the chords. And that I um, especially paid attention to the, to the chord changes. Uh, when I was working on Justin's course, the backing tracks that he had were a bit more uh, complex. So um, I didn't really pay attention to the chords. I, I of course noticed the chord changes. And I was trying to do it more with a musical ear. I think he called it, uh, Justin called it, uh, reactive listening. That you listen um, how the notes sound on the chords. But now I was thinking a bit more uh, in, in actual uh, note terms. Like what, what are actually the chords that are being played? And what are the notes that are part of these chords? And how can I use this to my advantage to make something sound a bit more musical? So in the beginning I showed you a few fragments from one improvising session. Because I think putting a full five minute uh, session is a bit boring, is that in the beginning I consciously chose parts that I thought sounded well from this uh, session, but the later ones didn't sound so well. They were, uh, they were not really musical ideas. I think I was just playing, but it wasn't really uh, moving. It wasn't going towards a melody or an idea. They were just some random notes. And this is something I quite have to watch out for. Maybe it's normal at this stage. But I have to get a bit more comfortable with silence. I really have this urge to keep playing continuously and it's maybe it's a bit stupid because I remember uh, Justin talking about this in Major Skill Maestro, like it's okay, let the music breathe, don't play too many notes. Paul also um, repeats this. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess one of the best ways to learn is just to, uh, to realize it for yourself. Realize what, what things you can improve and work on them. Generally, I feel comfortable with improvising. Uh, and I'm sure that next level playing will give me much more advice on how to improve my uh, current improvising skills. And I'm really excited to see uh, where we'll end up in a couple of months. Another important part of the first level of next level playing is music theory, everyone's favorite topic. And one aspect of music theory in this first level is the use of chords in a key. Basically each key has a number of chords associated with it that will sound good and they are all based around the major scale. This is a very simple explanation, but this is not the point right now. What I wanted to say was that this course really helped me to visualize the position of these chords in the key uh, better on the guitar. Uh, for example, I always used to think about the chords, uh, the chords in the key using a bar chord with a six string root. So this would be an A chord. And then I knew that the four chord would be here and the five chord would be here. And I, uh, from there I basically did the further reasoning. So if the five chord is here, the six chord is here, one step further. Uh, but by thinking uh, and playing in this course, I also found that there's another six chord that's here. Uh, from the first chord to the sixth chord. They're the same chord, just played on a different location. And it's, I, I, I know where these chords are, but I never really uh, realized, uh, uh, I never really considered of playing them in different ways. Another example is on the fifth string root. Uh, for example, we have a D chord here. And from the D chord, the five is here. The six is here. And there's another six. So, um, Similar to the six string root, we can also go back. So here. So we have a B minor chord. Same, same chord as here, B minor. So again, there are, of course, multiple ways of playing the six chord. But from the six chord, I also found, here's the four chord. They're actually very close together. 
another thing I never realized because I was always uh, playing these chords really focused on the six string root bar chords. Well, of course you can also play them with a fifth uh, fifth string root. And uh, yeah, the, the course just really helped me to to play a bit around with it, try different uh, uh, chords in different positions on the neck. So that's that's really great. I'm curious. Uh, in, in to what extent the fretboard will further open for uh, open to me later on in the course. To be honest, I didn't learn that many completely new things in this first level of the course. However, I realized how things that I previously knew are connected to each other. I really enjoyed working on the guitar solo and improvising, and I also felt that uh, my musical ear was improving through improvising without actively training it. The solo was stretching my technical abilities, but in a way that it's still fun and uh, rewarding when you can finally play it at the uh, full speed. All in all, a great and fun uh, start to the course. Although acoustic adventure still has uh, my priority, I'm really curious about what's still ahead of me and maybe more importantly what steps uh, I will take as a guitarist uh, in the coming months, both on acoustic and electric guitar. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was somewhat helpful or inspiring or entertaining at least or something and have a nice day.